Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin, and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to the Lord 
to love the name of the Lord and to be God's servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it to hold fast my covenants, these I will these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord, who gathers the outcasts of Israel? I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be to God. The psalm designated for this morning is Psalm 67. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let, Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us blessing. May God give us the blessing and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of the Holy One. to him and said to them, listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if a blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. And Jesus said, Are you also still without understanding? 
Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David, my daughter is tormented by a demon. But he, Jesus, did not answer at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting at us. Jesus answered, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him and said, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs under the table eat the crumbs that fall from their masters. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus starts off our section of the Gospel of Matthew chapter 15 with this little uh, parable that he gives about how we are defiled. Back then, people thought that if you ate certain kinds of foods, and, and still in Judaism, there are people who want to stay in a certain dietary pattern. And they thought if you ate a certain kind of food, it defiled you, it made you unclean. They might think about pork in the same way we would think of with this image of uh, something that is grubs that would be eaten in sauce. Pretty unappetizing, but also not just about the appetite, but even something that just seems gross and totally undesirable. But this teaching that Jesus gives raises a lot of questions for the disciples. They say, explain to us the meaning of this parable. They don't understand it. And for a lot of us, parables are really a weird thing, too. We wonder, what does it mean? We read these different stories and teachings of Jesus, and they just raise questions for us. Well, one of the things that we want to think about is that a parable is something that is a wise saying. It's understood and used in the Hebrew Scriptures and in the New Testament with Jesus as a wisdom teaching, something that if we understand it, it will enrich us and make us uh, more wise. It's also often an allegory, and it's often some kind of little story that has a surprising twist that subverts convention. Well, that's what Jesus is sort of trying to explain. He gives them a wisdom saying when he starts talking about what defiles. But there are behaviors that, we, that Jesus did that are also like a parable, where people have an expectation, sort of like how a baby sees something and they can't comprehend that when that towel gets ripped away, there will be this surprise, this unexpected thing, which is their parent. Well, for us, these stories and embodiments that Jesus gives surprise us. This story we're listening to about the Syrophoenician woman is definitely a parabolic behavior. And I want to argue that when Jesus gives the teaching about what defiles, he then goes on to embody the meaning of that parable. He is moving through a conventional interaction with this woman, and he is moving through predictable behaviors his disciples would totally understand why he treated her like he did. But let's just unpack it a little more. So they have the encounter, and as would be expected by convention, 
Jesus does not interact with her at all. And that is a conventional approach. Then, when she starts engaging him, when she starts begging him to, to heal her, he tells her his mission. This is the mission that they all expect of him, that he is going to save and help the lost tribe of Israel. That's his primary engagement. But everything that happens after that is subversive. It's a surprise. It's a way of challenging the way that people conventionally understand the, the presence of these pagans, of these Gentiles in Palestine. So she convinces Jesus to do this miracle for her. She convinces him that even though she is this woman who is not a, um, a, gen, uh, a Jew, that still her life matters. And a surprise happens. The surprise that's unexpected behavior happens. Jesus says to her, your faith is great. She persuades him to make a change. Now, I think it's really important for us to sit with this for a minute. Because for us, the, we so often have conventional behaviors and we think that there is a sort of prescribed way of doing things that we should follow. But Jesus shows us that our lives, when we stop and really think about how to live like Jesus, that our lives can be transformative, that we can actually open a window to heaven by moving into living differently. So Jesus, maybe he was actually changed by this. Maybe this interaction changed him enough to, to rethink his approach to this woman. But I would argue that what he's doing is exactly the same thing as what he was teaching before. Here's a woman who, to touch her, to engage with her, would be defiling in some way, right? She's impure, he is pure as a Jew. But he does engage her, and he does give healing and, and renewal and restoration to her. So it moves the, the, all that are watching and all that are being uh, a part of that moment into a new place, a new way of thinking. Because he shows them that it's not simply these categories of this is clean and that is unclean. But it's the love and power of God coming out of us, the healing words coming out of us that are what really matter to God. And that when we defile by what comes out of our mouths and the way we treat other people, that's way, way worse than following these standards that often get held up. So think about this, because there are a lot of parables that get held up for us, behavioral parables, right? And frequently they're funny. Like if you think about the Beverly Hillbillies, you get this old hillbilly family coming up from, from West Virginia or Oklahoma or wherever it was, and they start living in a mansion. And that juxtaposition, that surprise of context, suddenly throws a lot of things into conversation. Same can be true about this show that's on Netflix right now. If you've seen it, it's called Love on the Spectrum. And you see these beautiful people in their beautiful gowns, sort of set up like the Beverly Hillbillies mansion. But in fact, they are all on the autism spectrum. And their sophistication is completely different. Their whole way of being in the world is probably the opposite of sophistication. Instead, they're honest and they, they do stuff that you're not supposed to do, like passing gas on your first date. So these kinds of parabolic manifestations, these ways that what convention gets subverted and opened up are ways that we're used to in thinking about how we can learn new things, how we can rethink things, and how God can break in. Okay. So what about us? How are we going to live in ways that are parabolic? I mean, that's a weird word. Who even says that? But how are we going to live in ways that make a window for God, that make activities that we do show people the love and power and healing of God? I would argue that one of the ways that we can do that is to look out for where we can be present to God. What about when we see a stranger crying? For most of us, that's super awkward and we just look away. But what if we saw that as an opportunity? 
an opportunity to reach out to somebody. Or, or how about when you're getting uh, groceries at the grocery store? What if you engage in a different way? Or leave a little note, a thank you note. What about that? Or what about when you're going through the drive through and the person, the masked person, reaches out your, your McDonald's or your whatever, Burger King, and you hand them a tip? Wouldn't that be kind of a window into who God is to say thank you for this. Thank you for being a part of taking care of me. I'm not arguing that we need to look like Jesus on the outside. In fact, I think the superficial ways that we represent Jesus, like with our special t-shirts or our Sunday routines or whatever it is, if it doesn't go deeper than that, it means nothing. So what are we doing? At St. Paul's, historically, we have continued, even through this coronavirus, to give meals, to make meals that we share and sit down with people, strangers we don't know, and meal share and love and learn about each other. That's a revelation because it's very seldom, especially without alcohol, where you sit down with somebody and get to know them. And then we also worship together. And that worship has continued even through this time when we're doing it on Zoom or even here on YouTube. But what it means is we quit being God and we let God be God. That's a very important activity that we participate in with our whole body. And it reveals to us the power of God because that's how we incorporate the power of God in us. Jesus said, your faith has healed you. This embodiment that we do that opens windows for who God is, it's not about the person we're interacting with. It's not about the checkout person or the person who's crying on the bus. It's about us opening up that calcified way of being human that we've been socialized into and saying, you know what, God, I know you're greater than this. And I know that when I open myself to that and take the risk or be vulnerable, that that's where your power comes. Paul said, when I am weak, then I am strong. God chooses the weak things of this world to show the power of God. May we be those people. May we be people who when hatred is loud, we speak words of love and act in ways that show that love is stronger and it heals. Amen. Amen. Let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. He suffered for our sake. He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
the prayers of the people. The Canaanite woman pressed upon Jesus her needs and was heard. With expectant faith, let us place before God earnest petitions for ourselves and our world, saying, Lord, have pity on us. For our world in need of healing, in search of a savior, yet far from Jesus, let us call out to the Lord. Lord, have pity on us. For the churches and their leaders, harrowed by institutional concerns and tremendous transition. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Dion, our bishop. For Rebecca, our rector, and Carol, our seminarian, let us call out to the Lord. Lord, have pity on us. For those who are troubled by demons of mind and body, for those who must watch others suffer, we pray especially for first responders, caregivers, medical people, and all who care for those who are ill. We pray for those who support recovery, provide mental health care, and those who heal. Let us call out to the Lord. Lord, have pity on us. For those whose faith is impelling them beyond the limits of society, and the constraints of culture, that we may live in ways that embody the ways of love rather than the ways of the culture. Let us call out to the Lord. Lord, have pity on us. For all of us here present, for those whose faith is known to God alone, and for those intentions we hold deep in our hearts, let us call out to the Lord. Lord, have pity on us. We pray also the sick and suffering am among us, especially Jimmy, Leroy, Lisa and Kevin, Stacy and Kathy, Kenny, Grace, Stephanie, Kristen, Billy and Harrison, Shirley, Ted, Henry, David, Sarah, Indus, Melissa Combs, the Stratton family, Sally, Maureen, Betty, George, and Larry. I invite you to name those for whom you wish to pray. I give thanks for the birthday of Betty Breer, who turned 90 this week, and Emily Ochu for her birthday. We pray for an end to the pandemic and for all who are suffering from the effects of COVID-19. Let us call out to the Lord. Lord, have pity on us. We pray for those who have died. Please name those you wish to remember. Brian, Charlie. Christopher Rowland. For all those whom we love but no longer see, grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Let us call out to the Lord. Lord, have pity on us. Infinite God, we have no claim to your mercy. Yet it is your mercy we so desperately need. Turn your ear toward our supplications and grant us your healing touch. We ask this with faith in the name of Jesus, who is Savior of the world and one with, with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, we have done. and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent 
for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Beloved, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We will now enter into a time of spiritual communion. As we do that, I invite you to join us on the lawn of St. Mary and Joseph, which is a four minute walk from the church, very close by, on the corner of Holly Hill and Minnesota. There's a, a wide, gracious lawn and ample parking, and we will gather there to receive the consecrated host that will be at 6.30 p.m., 6.30 p.m. this evening. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in Jesus Christ, our Lord, you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who forever sing this song to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and creator of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, the king of the universe, becoming a criminal because of love. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks for it, he gave it to his disciples and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption, O oh God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy and everlasting food of life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. In unison, let us pray together in unison. In union, O Lord, with the faithful of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We present to you our souls and bodies with the earnest wish that we may always be united to you. And since we may not be able to receive you sacramentally, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all the love of our souls. Let nothing ever separate you from us. May we live in you, and may you live in us, both in this life and in the life to come. Amen. May God bless us with the grace to never sell ourselves short. May God give us grace, give you grace, to risk something big for something good and the grace to remember that the world is far too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forever. Amen. serve the Lord. 
and come in peace at 6.30 to gather together in our full selves with our masks and our hand sanitizer and our drinks and our chairs to honor the bodily presence that God has given us in these beautiful bodies and to know that these bodies give us the opportunity to reveal the invisible through the visible. God bless you and keep you and we will see you at 630. There Thanks. will be seconds. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>